Hi, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org. The image that you're looking at is actually a video clip that's been processed in Photoshop CS6. Photoshop has always been able to produce videos from frame animation, but now with CS6, it's a true full-featured timeline-based video editor, and all of those adjustments and filters that you used to be able to apply to photos can now be applied to videos, and it's pretty easy to use. Let's take a look at how it works. The basics are a lot like any other video editor. I'll start by opening the timeline from the tab at the bottom of the screen. You can also do that from the window menu here. Click on timeline. And then I will click this little film looking icon and add media. You can open multiple clips at once if you want. And I'll click open. And you'll notice that in the timeline there is a video group that holds multiple clips over here. And then in the layers palette, let me make a little extra space here there is an individual video layer for each of the video clips within the video group. One of the things that takes a little getting used to is the fact that over here in the layers palette, the layer at the bottom of the stack is the one that comes first in the video timeline. And if you change the order of the stack, so if you move the bottom video up, it moves it further along the timeline. That seems a little backwards to me, but once you get used to it, it works just fine. In the video group here on the timeline, the ends of the clips snap together so that there are never any gaps or overlaps. If you do want overlaps though, all you have to do is drag a layer out of the video group over here in the layers palette. So for example, if I wanted this middle video to overlap the first one, I would just drag it out of the group and then I can move its position on the timeline by dragging it left or right. Now, if I move the playhead over, you can see that this one is appearing over the top of the other, and if I want to adjust its opacity, I can do that just like I would any other Photoshop layer. And if I move another clip out of the video group, like so, then I have two separate video tracks up here, and if I move one of them onto the same track as the other one, you can see that it automatically creates a second video group, and that will function just like the original video group did. For the moment though, I'm just going to back this up to where we started with a single video group, and uh, that's easier to work with. If you want to edit the end point or beginning of a clip, you can grab its end and drag it, and Photoshop gives you a nice little pop-up preview so you can decide where you want to make the cut makes it very handy. And if you don't want all of your transitions between clips to be hard cuts like this, Photoshop also gives you a nice little collection of fades and crossfades that you can simply select and then drag and drop onto the timeline like so. And now as you can see there is a nice smooth transition between the two clips. And of course I can also drag in a fade for a single clip like maybe a fade with black this time and I'll just drag that to the beginning here and if I play now, you can see it fades through black into the video. If you want to change the duration of a transition, it's as simple as clicking on that fade and dragging it left or right to make it longer or shorter. And finally, if you want to adjust the audio on a clip, all you have to do is select it, right click on it, and that brings up a context menu where you can adjust the audio properties, and here you can adjust the volume, the fade in and out, and you can also mute the audio completely. So those are the basics, but let's move on to the good stuff. I'm talking about all of the adjustments and effects that make Photoshop what it is. If you know how to use adjustment layers in normal Photoshop documents, then using them with videos will be a simple matter for you. Simply select the clip that you want to adjust, create an adjustment layer, and make the changes. So for example, this first clip looks kind of overexposed and washed out, so I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer to it. And now I'll darken up the shadows and bring in some contrast with it. That looks a little bit better. And that adjustment is applied to the entire clip. If you look closely at this new adjustment layer, you'll notice that it has this little arrow in it pointing down to the layer below it. That means that it's a clipping layer it only applies to the layer directly below it instead of all of the layers below it in the layers palette. New adjustment layers in the video group are automatically created as clipping layers. Now what if you want to make an adjustment to only part of a clip? Maybe I want to darken the sky in this clip for example. 
You start off the same way. You select the clip and create an adjustment layer. I'll do a curves layer this time also. Then you make the adjustment. Here I'll just darken up the whole image a little bit and create some contrast in the sky. Then go back to the layers palette and click on the layer mask. Now I'm going to press Control I to invert the mask on that adjustment layer and then use a white paintbrush to just paint in the effect where I want it to be, like so. And now this adjustment is being applied to the sky of the entire clip. Now if you want to use filters, again, it starts out the same way. You select the clip that you want to filter, you go up to the filter menu, and then you convert for smart filters. Now I'll move the playhead over this clip so that we get a preview. Then I'll go up to the filter menu and select something interesting, maybe oil paint. I'll just use these defaults and press OK. And now the filter is applied to this entire clip. And of course it doesn't have to be the oil paint filter. There are dozens of different options. Some of them are pretty cool actually. But then there are also some filters that simply are not available for smart objects, including the new blur filters. So for those sorts of effects, you'll need to use the old-fashioned methods with older filters. Now I'm just going to bring in one last video clip here. I will add in uh, these baby alligators. That's what this video really needs. And um, I'm going to move this clip out of the video group. And I think what I'm going to do here is make this kind of a picture-in-picture. -picture. So I'm going to, again, select this layer, convert it to a smart object, and then I will press Control T to transform it. Then I'm just going to make it smaller, and I'll drag it up into this corner of this, uh, maybe this corner here. I'll just put it right there. And now if I want to, I can add some layer styles, like a stroke. Just make a thicker black line around this. And maybe I'll add an inner shadow. If I play this, you can see the picture-in-picture -picture effect. Doesn't really make any sense here, but you can see how it works at least. I think I'll go ahead and just delete this layer. Just to finish things up, I thought I'd mention that you can also add in text and other objects to your video projects, and you can animate them a lot like you would if you were using After Effects or Flash. For a quick example, I'll pull in this image from another document. Just going to drag this right in. Since my video group was selected, it ended up at the end of my clips here, but I'm just going to move this out of the video group, and I'm going to pull it up here to the front of the document. A still image is just like a short video clip in the timeline. You can drag its ends to make it longer or shorter, and you can add transitions to it from this little transitions menu if you want. But if you want to animate the whole thing, that's a little bit more tricky. To begin with, you need to expand the options here in the layer. I'm going to expand the whole timeline a little bit. And then I'm going to move the playhead to the beginning of the clip. I want the animation to start with this title clip off the screen to the left. So I'm going to begin by dragging it there. And then I'm going to press the stopwatch for the position track. Now I'll move the playhead forward about a second and then drag that title clip back into the center of the screen again. On the position track, a new diamond shaped keyframe has been created, which essentially says that this is where I want the object to be at this point on the timeline. Now I'm going to move the playhead forward a few more seconds and create another keyframe by pressing right here because I want to make sure that the image is still in the same position before it starts moving again. Now finally, I'm going to move the playhead forward another second or so, and then I will grab this image and drag it off the side of the screen. And again, that has automatically created another keyframe here. And now we're finished with the animation. If we back up, we can watch the entire thing comes onto the screen, pauses, and then goes off the other side. And that's about it. I think we've covered the major features of Photoshop CS6 as a video editor. Individually, the features may not be all that remarkable, but when combined, the possibilities are really pretty amazing. Good luck with it. Oh, and if you'd like to hear more of the specifics about anything that I covered here, 
like animation techniques, let me know in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. You can find more videos and information about photography in general at lightandmatter.org.